A beam of light of 650 nanometer wavelength is incident along the normal to two closely spaced parallel glass plates. For what air gap separation between the plates will the transmitted beam be of maximum intensity? I mean, there's some words here, but one thing that jumped out to me here is maximum intensity, which implies pretty strongly that we're talking about constructive constructive interference of light. So if we could assume that, just from looking at this problem, then maybe without even drawing any diagrams, we could go straight to the constructive interference formula, which is 2 times the thickness of our uh, interface, our material we're in, is equal to m lambda n, where m is the order or the number, basically that means that there's a couple of different thicknesses for which this is going to work, okay, and it typically starts at zero, goes to one, because you could have zero thickness, that'll give you maximum transmission, but there's also, uh, you know, a first order, a second order, etc. so I'll put that there, m can be equal to zero, one, two, etc. Some people start counting it from one, because they don't want to talk about the possibility that there's zero thickness and you can do that too. But anyway, it's that, that's the order, times lambda n, which is the wavelength of light specifically in the material that we're talking about. Now here we're talking about the um, material being air, okay, because we're interested in what air gap separation. So normally lambda n would be the wavelength in air over the index of refraction of the material. Of course, we are talking about air, so this is gonna be equal to one. So this is a little bit redundant here. So basically 2t equals m lambda should work. For what air gap separation? Well, we can do thickness is equal to m lambda over two. We could probably assume we're not talking about zero thickness, and we're probably talking about the first or the smallest thickness, so we'll use order one, my thickness should be equal to lambda over two. So 650 nanometers divided by two should simply give us 325 nanometers. Now that's one way of thinking about it, and it does work, and that is correct. It's not the method I recommend taking. I've kind of made a lot of assumptions here. So just briefly, I want to actually draw, I want, I want to kind of diagram this out for you. If I do a little, little picture here, let's draw some glass. We'll say that's our first layer there. We'll leave this kind of blank. We'll say that that's going to be air. And then there's another layer of glass. And often what I do is I label well, I wasn't given the index of refraction, but we'll assume it's close to crown glass maybe, so maybe 1.54. N equals 1 for that layer because it's air. N equals 1.54. So let's consider here comes a beam of light, okay? And let's just say it penetrates this. Yeah, it reflects off this, but that's not going to have any bearing on what goes on with the reflection or the interference. So I'm just going to consider what goes on in this uh, layer here. So yeah, that's going to bounce off, but I'm not too concerned about that. So here comes the main beam of light, and it's going to penetrate, and it's going to keep going. And what's interesting is what happens here at this interface, okay? This is a situation where N1 is less than N2. The index of refraction of the material that it's leaving is less than the one that it's entering, which causes a phase shift, so on the reflection. So I'm going to use a little dotted line to represent the reflection that's going on here. The fact that this beam that's reflected off of this interface here has been shifted 180 degrees. It's probably worthwhile for me to do some more background information, some more videos on the subject. I will get around to it if I can. But anyway, this one gets shifted 180 degrees. But then let's notice how it hits another interface, another interface where this same situation is happening. So, of course, it'll keep going. Again, not concerned about that. More interested in the fact that this will be shifted yet again. Right? 
So 180 degree shift, another 180 degree shift, and back to where you started. Now this was always going to keep going, and this is always going to keep going. And this process can, you know, it'll repeat indefinitely until it runs out of intensity, but I'm not too interested in that. Again, just the first order thing. What I'd like for maximum transmittance, okay, for, for rather maximum intensity on the other side of this, is for these two beams here, the first two that I've considered, that are actually going to penetrate all the layers of glass, I would like them to be in phase, okay? And if you look at the diagram I've drawn, they kind of are in phase. They're both solid lines, neither of them are dotted. They're in phase right now. Which to me, that says, let's use the formula that represents how this path difference the path difference of this beam of light as compared to this one, which comes from how it's been refracted and reflected up here, let's talk about how we want that phase difference, that path difference to be equal to a multiple of the original wavelength. In other words, not shifted. So I'd like to look at this thing and talk about how we're not shifting it. And the formula that describes an unshifted beam of light in this context is, of course, the same as the one that represents constructive interference. You would like two times the thickness. That's this way and that way. Two thicknesses worth of extra path length that the light has to travel is equal to a constant whole number multiple of the original wavelength in that material. So this formula describes constructive interference in general, the way I prefer to think of it. If I go through the whole process, it describes an unshifted beam of light. And of course, if you carry this out, you get right to 325 nanometers, which is a thickness for which we're going to get constructive interference on the other side of the air gap.